Hey, what is going on guys? This is Jason with Jadron Aquatics coming at you again. So today we are going back out to Texas Aquatics. I uh, got a new shipment in. I know I haven't put one of these videos up in a while. Um, finally got a chance to get back out there. Life has been absolutely crazy. Everything that I own at my shop has broken this whole year. This whole year has been absolutely insane but I'm finally coming out of it and getting things fixed and getting back rolling again and trying to get back into a uh, normal routine again where I'm putting up videos again. Uh, but as before we get this video started, I wanna talk a little bit about um, in previous videos uh, at this same pet store, um, so that you guys know that whenever he puts his, uh, whenever he gets his fish in, he doesn't quarantine. He'll he'll float the bags, but then he'll cut the bags open and release the fish into the water after they've uh, just temp acclimated. And first of all, so that you understand, when you watch his videos, it, this is not something that I would do. It's not something I necessarily agree with. Um, I would obviously do it different than if it was my own pet store, but this is the way that he chooses to do it. And know that he's been doing this for about 35 or 40 years um, with very good success. So who am I to say anything to him? But I know a lot of you guys out there get really fired up about uh, the way that he does this. So I just wanted to talk about that at first so that you guys understand again, this is not me promoting the way that this is done. But what I wanna ask you is, have you ever talked to your pet store owners? Have you ever been there when those guys are putting their fish out? A lot of the pet stores that uh, I know, they typically do this stuff after hours, so no one really ever sees, no one's really sure if they quarantine. No one really knows exactly how they do it. But for those of you guys who do, or if you're out the next week, ask them, how do they bring in their fish? How do they acclimate them? You know, what is the process they do? Can you be there and see one time when they do it? Because I'm really curious. If you'll leave your comments down below, would love to hear um, what you guys are seeing. All right, so let's head out there and look at all the new fish. Okay, these are the pictures catch. These are the, the spotted pictures. These are real cool. Real active catfish with real long whiskers from South America. They're always moving in your tank. So you, so you get, you get a couple of them and they'll move around like a in a tank like a tetra or something in the tank. Always moving around. And they'll hang with your sickles and such. They're not super aggressive. They will like tiny fish, but they're not super aggressive, but they'll hold their own against most of the African sickles. Okay, this is honeycomb catfish. This is a South American type wood catfish. Stays pretty small, two or three inches. Uh, they they kind of hide a little bit, but they're real cool uh, pattern on them, um, like little honeycombs on them. We also have some fancy plecos. These are the redfin sternellas. The these are the uh, ones that gets fairly big, like a cactus pleco. Uh, but nice, pretty red fins on them. Um, they'll, get, they'll get the little spikes on their body as they get bigger, but they get pretty big before you see a lot of spikes on them. Where'd they go? But they get bright, 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 nice, pretty fins on them, and that's all pretty pattern to them. See a lot of sponge back there too. As the goldfish go in the way. Yeah, these are the gold striped panakes, LDA-01, another uh, South American panake type. Um, don't get real big, three to four inches. Uh, real nice, pretty yellow color on them. Um, and they don't get real big, but they're really tough, really durable, really heavy duty armor on them. Real nice, pretty pattern on them. the bright yellow one in the middle there. These are the silver arowanas, they get pretty big. These are the ones that, that get giant on you if you're not careful. Not super aggressive, but if they can eat it, they will. If they can't eat it, they'll leave it alone. Always active on top of the water. And if they have the opportunity to jump, they will. Well, that's most anything anyway, but yeah, they do jump out. The silvers are probably the worst about jumping out. Um, so you want to keep a pretty good lid on there. They will eat small fish, but they also eat pellets pretty good. And these are ones that have just grown up a little bit so they don't have a yolk sack on them. How now, long do the they keep a yolk sack? I'm sorry? How long do they keep a yolk sack? So they're probably about a month or so. Oh, okay. They, uh, they're born with a yolk sack. There's a lot of fish that are born with yolk sacks. Uh, Arowana is one of the ones that, that gets born with yolk sacks. You also have to see real small ones available with a yolk sack. 
they're very fragile. They're not, they, when with the yolk sac, they don't eat anything because they don't need to eat because they, they have the yolk sac taking care of them. But you gotta get them eating something or they'll starve to death. That's why I don't mess with the real tiny ones because they're just so fragile. They don't eat and everybody jacks with the yolk sac and if they damage the yolk sac, the fish dies. These are the green phantom plecos, another nice South American pleco. Really nice, pretty, uh, pretty pattern on them. These are the four line pictus. These are like the regular pictus, the spotted pictus. They get a little bit bigger, so they can hang with some little bit bigger fish. Still real active, still real long whiskers on them. A little bit bigger silver arowanas. Another South American pleco. This is the, uh, the one of the more common plecos. Real nice, real nice, pretty color on them. Gold spots with gold fins. Yep. Okay, we have another um, another type of uh, variant citrus. This is the Blue phantom. Oh, these That's the hyphen greens. These are the hyphen. These are the hyphen green phantoms. Yeah, see the connection between the fins here. Now, is that is that found in the wild like that, or is that something somebody's line bred? No, no, that's, that's these are all wild cut, and they can't. The L two hundred green phantom and the L two hundred hyphen green phantom both have the same L numbers. But they're in different families because they have different fan patterns in them. One, the L200 is a variant citrus. The, L, uh, the standard L200 is a variant citrus. The L200 uh, high fin is a different uh, family because of the different fin patterns. They, they, they tend to break all these guys down by, by fin patterns more than anything else. That's how they classify this stuff. These are the LDA33 snowball plecos, the big black, the big black pleco with, with white spots on them. These guys get about six inches long. Another Barian citrus, just like the gold nuggets, but black with white spots. These are the red hook silver dollars. They get the bright, real nice, pretty long hook on their tail. They're like regular silver dollars, and they're always active and stuff, and they have a lot more pretty fins. And these are always wild caught, where almost always silver dollars you see are captive bred. And they're starting to try to breed these, but they haven't figured out how to get them off bred regularly yet. You think that all silver dollars are breed the same, but something's different about these. And these are the Royal Plecos, the Red Eye Royals. They're nice sized ones here. They get pretty big, but they take forever to grow. They grow about an inch a year. Keep the real nice, pretty pattern on them, even, even big ones, even ones that are a foot and a half long will have that same pattern on them. They get a real wide face to them. They get almost as, they don't get quite as wide as they are long, but it's pretty close. They'll be, they'll be you know, a foot and a half long, and they'll have a eight inch wide face. Gorgeous fish. These are the L204. I call them emperors, but they've been renamed to flash plecos. They have the black with white stripes. These are out of Colombia, and they'll uh, they'll be black with white stripes. They'll keep the, that pattern most of their lives. They don't get super big, 5.9 inches or so. And these are the blue phantom plecos, like a gold nugget or a green phantom, these are the blue phantoms. These are just from a, a different area in the lake besides the, the green and the blues. This is another, uh, Cory Cat has a mask on it. This is probably a Mate. Could be a Medellini, but I think it's, a, it's supposed to be supposed to be Mate's. Have a mask and a black, black stripe across their back. Last nice fish.
Another real mild live fish out of South America. They don't get super big, six, seven inches, I think, as big as they get. Real mild, still fairly nocturnal, but they're not, you know, they'll, they'll be okay with your more mild community stuff. Okay, these are the Ocellaris peacock bass. These are the ones that get massive, two feet long plus. These actually will work as a, as a regular bass, as a, they'll actually hit a hook and everything. Gorgeous colors as they get bigger. All the, all the different reds and yellows on them. And this is another dwarf quarry, the quarry abrosis. They're the broken line quarries. Put it in both these sinks. We put it in this tank here first. And these are more of a schooling quarry. All quarries are schooling to a certain extent, but these are even more so. They'll actually come up and swim around everybody else. They'll actually school like a tetra does. Thanks again, guys, for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed this new unboxing of a lot of cool fish. Be sure and leave a comment down below. Again, remember the question that I asked at the first of the video. Uh, be sure and leave those comments down below. I uh, would love to hear from each and every one of you. So thanks again, guys, and God bless.